Parsons is an energy conservation and sustainability management group, and they have offer offer technologies on both those sides and have a manufacturing plant. We're going to hear from Philip, who's and from Powersmith, who are a little bit farther down the path and starting to think hard about uh, scope three. Um, I guess where I'd like to start my two second <laughs> overview of, of of where we came from. We. Um, uh, our business started uh, making high-performance, high-efficiency transformers. So these are the power, part of the power distribution system in every building. And, uh, and that's what we manufacture here in, in, uh, in Brampton, right, 407 Airport Road. And, uh, you know, so efficiency has always been a key, key part of our business. And uh, when we established the manufacturing, we, you know, we really pushed uh, in terms of minimizing our environmental impact and getting certified to ISO 14001 was well, one of those initiatives. So we did that jo a joint certification to 9,000 and 14,000. Um, what and sort of that was really, you know, you can see sort of, a, you know, you've got to manufacture green if you're talking green in terms of energy savings and reducing footprint that way. What happened, um, I guess, over the years, we 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 were, you know, we sort of combined lean lean manufacturing green, so lean and green and. To sort of together through the manufacturing process, and then, um, and over time, what we found was was that you know a f a projects still got driven by energy, 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 and uh, you know which is dollars at the end of the day. And uh, as we moved into uh, metering, and we built a sustainability management platform. One of our uh, bigger markets is the uh, U.S. higher education market, so colleges and universities, where. You know they're quite far along in terms of, of having sustainability policies, green purchasing policies, and so on. And so we built a platform to be able to service that. And they were starting to do their greenhouse gas inventories. And so you know we 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 started developing a tool along those lines as well. And we said, well, obviously we're a natural implementation for that since we manufacture you know all these transformers. So so you know there's a big mindset change I think from you know moving from an energy cost reduction driven strategy to one that's driven by emission reductions, right? And so we got into it the way most people would get into it, scope one, so you know, your direct combustion, you know, the gas, natural gas use and so on, and then indirect, you know, through through electricity. So we, of course, had our, our gas and water bills, and we built our scope one, scope two emissions really, you know, pretty quickly. We've done that for 2007, eight, and nine. The problem is they're just numbers. It's, you know, like they, they say, it's carbon accounting. Well, accounting is for, numbers people, right? So it's hard to get uh, an audience within your business engaged on a piece of paper that totals up annual figures. So, you know, what we looked at was saying, we've got to do a couple of things. First of all, if we're going to get people engaged in the business, we've got to do reporting live. And so this sustainability platform that we developed was doing that for sustainability projects, for green building features and so on. And we said, well, okay, if we, could, we can take the live data instead of talking about it from a resource use point of view, but talk at, about it from an emissions perspective, then, you know, then that would be, you, you engage a different audience. Because, I mean, some people are interested in reducing energy or saving money or reducing, you know, your footprint. So very, very different audience. And you've got to be able to relate to those different groups. And we found that doing one annual report was just not engaging a whole lot of people. You could go and talk and say, look, this is what we did. It's still some big number, that tons of something that no one can relate to, right? So we, did, we, so we said, okay, doing it live is something that's really important, being able to give, give that feedback. But the other thing is that we said, you know, when you do the scope one, scope two, for our business, the, ener like the energy cost for, for our, our manufacturing process, so when I look at the bill at the end of the month, you go, gas and electricity represent less than 1% of my monthly overhead, right? So how much should I really be focusing on that? I mean, if I'm a, as a business guy, if I'm focusing more than 1% of my time on that, I'm crazy, right? It's misguided. But yet that's scope one and scope two, right? If you look at the bigger picture, which is where I was really pleased in November, finally I'm there going, okay, I'm not the only guy <laughs> talking about, you know, when I look again at the universities in the States, they're geared to scope one, scope two, with a little bit of scope three, and I'm there going, you're not, you know, you know, you're including business, travel, commuting, and stuff, and that's it for scope three. And you're going, give me a break. You're just building another building and another building, and you're not really looking at the emissions associated with all of that stuff. You're just looking at the operating part. So this this scope three, and this is the reason I put it up here. This is straight out of um, the GHG protocols draft document for scope three. Now you're talking, and this is where you look at a business like us and a business like yours, and you say, okay, this is where you're footprint really is. And once I started going through this math, and I ran back through 
the materials like copper, steel, uh, you know, that are the big components of our, tr our transformers. And I went back and did the math on the, with the emission factors and included that number. Well, sure enough, uh, our footprint was 90% driven by scope 3 data. Right? So if I'm really going to reduce the footprint in my business, like you and your businesses, you got to focus on scope three or you're, you're, you're misguided, basically. This, this is where it all happens. Now, that's easy to say, but holy cow, getting the data from upstream suppliers, big deal. Not just getting the data, but getting a valid emission factor. What's a valid emission factor for me, electrical grade steel? So I hunt around and you go, oh, okay, there's some generic steel numbers. But you're going, okay, that's not high process steel that I, need, I use for my product. But that's the only data available. So you go, okay, well, it's better than nothing. And so you hunt and you hunt and you hunt. Copper. So you say, copper, oh, I use copper. And you go, yeah, that's great. There's big aggregated numbers for copper on a, on a global basis. But you go, is that processed? and in, in, in a way that reflects my use of it. And you know, the answer again is no. So the big challenge is not just dragging through and saying, how do I get my supplier's you know, fuel bill when they deliver all their products, all their raw materials to me? Where do I get a valid you know, copper? Well, it's mine in Chile somewhere or in Russia or in Africa, who knows where. The emission factors are obviously very different whether it's put on a boat there or put on a boat somewhere else or driven on you know, it's mined in Quebec and shipped on a truck. Like, all those have hugely different emission factors, but we don't have any of that information. So what we decided was, oh, we're going to get pretty disappointed in terms of, and discouraged and demoralized if we don't get on with it. And I think the biggest thing for us was to say, look, take the big numbers, as bad or as inaccurate as the copper data, the steel data may be, at least put the framework in place, say this is the source document that's the best that I can find. It's got these emission factors, so they're traceable, so you can go back to them and say, this is the number I used, this is why I used it. If you got a better number, let me know. I'm happy to put it in, but you know, I ran to the end of my rope and got to here. And don't let it stop you from, from doing it, because at the end of the day, you know, if I look at it and say, if I can reduce 1% of the copper use in my product, that goes <coughs> that wipes out scope one, scope two impact by a factor of 10, right? So where should I be focused? I should be focused on that, right? And so, and in terms of emissions and, and, and energy and cost being all sort of tangled together, you know, people say, well, that's emission stuff. You know, let's focus the business. We gotta focus on staying alive, you know? So we gotta pay the bills. But you realize that, okay, well, sure, the, that copper, all those emissions, if I reduce that one pound of copper, it doesn't have to be mined in Chile. You go, that's a pretty big emission number reduction. Now, for the bean counter guys, when you look at the financial side of your business, you go, hey, one pound of copper, that's $5.30 I didn't have to buy. And as you run that through your business every month, you start going, well, holy cow, there's big dollar benefits to that as well. So now, in terms of getting initiative through a broader cross section of stakeholders in your business, is you can relate carbon emissions to materials, to raw materials use, but you can gauge different people. So, you know, someone who's there going, oh, I, I got to, my job is to reduce material use. And you're going, great, I'll focus on it. And I can report it and show it in terms that you relate to. I can, if, if it's the dollars of those materials, you can relate to it that way. If it's the general population of, of the people who are actually building the product or working on it or sourcing materials, they're not going to be motivated by dollars, realistically. The feedback that you provide them better be in terms that they can relate to and they can engage to and sort of reducing your carbon footprint is something they, they're willing, and I've seen it in my own organization, people are, are excited about it, right? And they're not doing it to save me a dollar or a pound of copper, they're doing it to reduce the footprint and wow, me as one employee, I can leverage my reduction of, of footprint through the business a lot better than I can do personally at home because of I'm the person who buys this or buys copper or winds it and I just figured out a technique to reduce our consumption of six inches times a thousand units. And so bringing that motivation to the table is what you've got to do. But don't, you can't let not knowing that information, and as, you know, as Pat said, boy, if you, you've got to get going now. Because I look back and I say, well, geez, so the only data that I've got of the last couple of years is total copper purchase, 2007. I can get that out of the accounting system. But a lot of the other stuff doesn't come out of the accounting system. And that's the first thing to realize, I think, when you're pulling your scope three footprint stuff, you can't just go and dig your power bills out or dig your water bills out, right? You've got to go back and say, I can never get this information from some transportation company three years ago. So don't get wrapped up in that because you can't change it anyways. So get focused on 
what are my consumption, what are my raw materials, and the, you know, it was an eye-opener for us is look at the other side, the downside, product use, energy used in your product over the life cycle of its installation. Have you ever thought of that? It's like, but that's part of a footprint that you're passing on to somebody else. So now suddenly you go, I gotta go back to my design guys and say, you know, we don't pay for the electricity waste in our product over the next 20, 30 years, but our customers do. And I've got to now take ownership of that converted emissions into my scope three footprint. So my footprint is this big, you go, hey, that's part of the su success of me shipping a lot of transformers, you go, but I got to take ownership of all the downstream emissions as well as all the upstream emissions. So, so, so it makes you think differently. So it's, it's really exciting that way, really exciting. So this is the kind of, this is sort of where, where we did, and I'll just show you a couple of snapshots because obviously it's not, it's not really about this, but it's part of getting information out, right? So when we decide to work on a project, the project, and we're going to work on this this afternoon, I'm really looking forward to be part of it, but you go, now instead of saying, you know, this is your kilowatt hour use, which I have trouble relating to, you know, kilowatt hour is some abstract number, and they're going up and down, can't relate to that either, but now in an emission stream, I can say, we did this project, let me, let me show it in emission streams live, and again, that allows you to engage a whole different audience, right? So I can go to a different section and have a look at it in its native units, if that's what you're interested in. But get people, get the information out, get it represented in a way that makes sense to people, right? And do things like, we've done things like equivalent units, right? So you go, total water use. You go, well, liters, I don't even know. So what's 900 liters? It's some amount, right? I have trouble getting my head around it. So if I can represent that in number of swimming pools or number of baths, number of showers, well suddenly I can, I can relate to those things, right? So it's taking the information and translating it into, again, a, a, what a broader audience can do. So to me, the, the, I think the takeaway from our sort of experience is first of all, as Pat said, get on it, get on it now, and look at the big, look at the big things. Like me not knowing you know, what the transportation of, of this raw material from my supplier to me two years ago, you go, okay, I can maybe dredge through and get that, but if that's tying up a resource, if I'm spending an hour of time doing that instead of an hour of time trying to figure out how to reduce my use of copper by half of 1%, then again, I'm doing this footprinting thing for the wrong reason. Don't do it for the inventory, don't do it for the data, do it to make a difference. So it's, that's what it's all about, is, is making a difference. So get the data and get it out there and get it out often and get it out in, in a framework that people can relate to. So, so that's, that's been, and I tell you, as you start picking through, you realize there are, there are a lot of questions that people have and they go, well, oh, if it comes from Chile, that's different than if it comes from Europe and you're going, yeah, that's right. So, so now it's, you're, you're engaged, people are engaged in it. So it's, it's, people get excited about trying to figure out the best way to do it. And so, so you end up farther along than if, you know, you're just trying to figure out doing this accounting somewhere. So, so I tell you, the opportunity to engage people is, it's, it's very exciting. So, there you go. My opinion. Thank you. Thank you.